Hi everyone, I'm looking into harmonic drive mounts for my astrophotography hobby and I bet I'm not the only one who's curious about them. So I wanted to share what I've learned so far. So first of all, what's up with these harmonic drive mounts? Well, as it turns out, the harmonic drive mount, also called the strain wave drive, was already invented back in 1957. So what are the main advantages of this drive? Well, it's reported to have zero backlash, a high torque, high accuracy, and a high reliability. Now those are all the good things we definitely want to see in a telescope mount. Now one problem I encountered was trying to find actual telescope mounts. None of the vendor websites have made a specific category for harmonic drive mounts yet, so I actually needed to scroll through all the mounts to find them. And I did find the ZWO AM5, the Ioptron's HAE29, the 29EC, the 43, and the 43EC, and the Pegasus Astro NYX101, and the Rainbow Astro RST135, the RST135E, and the RST300. Now to make it easier for everyone, I put them in a dynamic table on my website, and that table includes the price of course, the maximum payload capacity, some information on the kind of motors that are actually used on those mounts, of course also the weight of the mount, what kind of connections the mount can make, the kind of saddle to mount your telescope, and most importantly, if I could find it, I also included some information on periodic error and tracking accuracy. Now, If you know of any other harmonic drive mounts that I've missed, let me know and I'll add them to the list. So prices currently range from about $2,000 for the ZWO AM5 and the Ioptron HAE29 to a little under $3,000 for the Ioptron HAE43 and the Pegasus Astro NYX101 and upwards of $3,900 to $8,500 for the Rainbow Astro mounts. And the great thing about these mounts is that they are of course super lightweight, with the ZWO AM5, the Ioptron HAE43 weighing in at about 5 to 6 kilos, so that's only 11 to 13 pounds. Now the Pegasus Astro NYX101 weighs about 6.5 kilograms and the Rainbow Astro RST135 even reports a weight of 3.4 kilos only, but that's without a telescope saddle. Now also the Rainbow Astro RST300 weighs 8.5 kilos, so that's the heaviest one, without an inclusion of a saddle to mount your telescope. Now as a comparison, the head of my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount weighs about 17 kilograms, and the head of my Celestron Advanced VX is 7.7 .7 kilos. So, and you do need to take into account that those are classic equatorial mounts, and they do also need a counterweights to actually balance the mount. So the payload capacity on these mounts is also pretty impressive. You can use an optional counterweight on all these harmonic drive mounts to increase the maximum payload capacity. For example, the Rainbow Astro RST300 is able to carry about 30 kilograms without a counterweight to 50 kilos with a counterweight. The Pegasus Astro NYX101 and the Ioptron HAE43 are able to carry about 20 kilos without and 25 kilos with a counterweight and the Ioptron HAE29 and the ZWO AM5 both mention a maximum payload capacity of 13 kilos without and 18 to 20 kilos with a counterweight. Now as a comparison, my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro has a maximum payload capacity of about 20 kilograms for astrophotography. So I'm always excited to learn more about actual motors that are used in those telescope mounts and their tracking accuracy. At the back side, there's a similar mechanism uh, with the green uh, gears. It's also cyc cycloidal gears, but it has one tooth more. So effectively, this is a subtraction mechanism and uh, it subtracts this one from that one. And the effect is a very high gearing ratio of one to 300. Now when comparing the mounts I've mentioned, I quickly noticed that ZWO, Ioptron and Pegasus Astro mounts use a regular stepper motor and only the Rainbow Astro mounts, they use a DC servo motor. Now there are also some differences in the reduction ratio of the harmonic drives used. I think a high reduction ratio may be important to look at as it generally increases the torque to handle heavier loads and it also reduces the rotational speed of the harmonic drive 
which may improve the tracking accuracy of the mount. Now, looking at those reduction ratios, uh, the ZWO AM5 has the lowest reduction ratio of 300 to 1, but ZWO does report the use of an extra synchronous belt, I guess on the stepper motor, that could help with the tracking accuracy of that mount. But the Ioptron HAE29 has a higher reduction ratio of 480 to 1 in RA and 360 to 1 in DEC. Now the Ioptron 43 has an even higher reduction ratio of 640 to 1 in right ascension and 480 to 1 in declination. Now the Pegasus Astro NYX101 has a 500 to 1 reduction ratio in right ascension and a 300 to 1 reduction ratio in deck. And this mount also includes a belt on the stepper motor. Now the Rainbow Astro mounts, they don't report a clear number on the reduction ratios they have in RA and deck. But as mentioned, Rainbow Astro does report that all their models use a high precision DC servo motor instead of a stepper motor, which could also improve the tracking accuracy of those mounts. Now, I also have to mention that the iOptron has two specific EC models, the 29EC and the 43EC, which both include real-time periodic error control or RPAC in short. Now iOptron claims on their website that the EC mounts can be used without any additional guiding aid. Now you do need to pay about $1400 extra for a mount that includes RPAC as compared to the regular HAE29 and 43 that do not include that RPAC option. Looking at the connectivity options, all of these mounts have an auto guide port, they have an ASCOM option, and they can be connected via Wi-Fi or a USB cable to your PC, ASI Air or any other capturing device you might be using. The ZWO AM5 and the Ioptron mounts come with a hand controller, while the Rainbow Aspro models include a built-in GPS module. Now, let's talk about the most important thing, which is, in my opinion at least, tracking accuracy. ZWO AM5 claims a tracking accuracy of 0.5 to 0.8 arc seconds per pixel with their mount when guiding, and early adopters appear to confirm those numbers using telescopes with focal lengths up to about 1000 mm. Early adopters also report that short exposure times of about 1 second for guiding can also help to get the most accurate tracking results. Unfortunately, I could not find any information on the periodic errors of the Ioptron harmonic drive mounts in real life, so I guess the jury is still out on those mounts. Pegasus Astro reports three PhD2 graphs from their NYX101 on their website. Using telescopes with about 500 mm focal length, the PhD2 graphs of the NYX101 show an average of 0.3 to 0.6 arc seconds per pixel with off-axis guiding set at 1 second tracking. Now, using telescopes with a focal length up to 2800 mm focal length, one PhD2 graph shows about 0.8 to 1 arc second per pixel in RA and DEC with off-axis guiding set at 2 seconds. A couple of guiding graphs from the 135 RST and the 300 RST from Rainbow Astro show the deviation of about 0.4 to 0.7 arc seconds per pixel using various telescopes. Now, these early findings suggest that most of these harmonic drive mounts can guide well below 1 arc second per pixel, which is fine for telescopes that have a focal length up to about 1000 mm. Now, for longer focal length telescopes though, it may be more challenging to get to about 0.5 arc seconds per pixel on average. And I do need to mention that I usually get about 0.5 arc seconds per pixel when I'm guiding with my heavy duty EQ6R Pro mount. So guys, after looking at all these options, I'm still undecided about harmonic drive mounts. I know that prices have been coming down, this is great of course, but they're still quite expensive compared to classic equatorial mounts. Now don't get me wrong, the weight reduction, the lack of having to use counterweights and the improved wireless and USB connectivity, those things are all great and the lack of having to deal with backlash is a big plus. At the same time, I was hoping to see better tracking and guiding accuracies below the 0.5 arc seconds per pixel, preferably, which I would need for my longer focal length HHD telescope. Are you ready to jump on the harmonic drive mount bandwagon? Or are you sticking with your trusty German equatorial mount? 
I'm still undecided, even after making this video. So let me know what you think.